All right, welcome to Chaos to Clarity. Meteorologist Bernie Reno. You can follow me on X, formerly in, uh, known as Twitter. I'm at AccuRaino. All right, hey, listen, we, we talked about that, uh, how this was going to end up Raphael being a hurricane. It is. I mean, everything's working out as exactly as I thought it would. Now, the track, oh, that's a little tricky here, but l let me show you what's going on full screen. Oh, this is a uh, this is major hurricane, by the way. As I'm taping this here, it's uh, about one, about two o'clock here uh, on uh, on on uh, Wednesday, November six. This is a major hurricane coming across the Isle of Youth. This is a, going to be a pretty bad hurricane here for uh, for Cuba here. Let me in, in this area. You're, you're in the right front quadrant. There's going to be a very uh, a bad. Um, Devast I don't want to call it devastating, but a, 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 certainly a, a damaging storm surge here. And there's going to be a lot of damage here in Cuba as this comes northward. We'll also get some impacts here across the southeastern Keys. So again, as I'm taping this, there it is, 115 miles per hour, a major hurricane. Now, this is coming into the Gulf of Mexico as we head toward tonight. And uh, let me show you uh, the wind shear here. Well, let, let me show you the water vapor loop Um I, I love this product, by the way, because it really shows you what's going on. Um, you have this, what we call this marsupial pouch. We call it this little area in here where you'll notice that we have a, a, a plenty of moisture. I don't see any dry air coming into the storm. It's being pushed away. You see the dry air being pushed away from Raphael. You don't have any uh, dry air coming in on the backside. You have a very well-maintained... Um, uh, feeder band on the water vapor loop coming on in in the center of the storm looks like the 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 eye has been covered a little bit here as it interacts with the cuba but i talked about this yesterday this is 25 degrees uh north latitude all right once it gets to 25 degrees north latitude you start getting in the wind shear you start getting in the dry air this whole area in here this is very hostile for development and while uh rafael is going to be in a good location until it gets to about 25 north once it gets into this area it's going to go from a hurricane and it's going to lose its wind intensity and weaken very quickly it's going to be like putting paper in a paper shredder that's what this dry air and this wind shear is going to do to the system now, in the meantime, though, we've got some time. So we're talking about 25 degrees uh, uh, north. It's located here. So from here to here, it's in a pretty good spot to strengthen further or to at least maintain its strength. I want to show you the uh, wind shear, uh, what it looks like here. And let me zoom in. Well, no, let's, let's just keep it here. So you see what I mean? There's this little pocket in here of this light, this light purple is light wind shear. Now, you'll note a lot of dark wind, a lot of darker color here. This is where you have the wind shear. I do think this light purple will extend northward for a little bit as um, as Raphael moves into this area. So again, I still think we have about 24 to 48 hours uh, where we're not looking at much in the way of wind shear. I want to show you some modeling on this really quick about this wind shear. And you know what we're going to look at? We're going to look at simple 200 millibar, right? All right, let me put this on. Let me put this in here, right here. Let me put this on full so you can see it a little better here. So this is our simple 200 millibar uh, wind shear right in here. All right, so uh, tomorrow morning, here it is. This, by the way, you can see it. This is uh, where Rafael's going to be. It's going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the wind shear. And you can see what's going on here. You've got an upper level high in here. So that's why Rafael is strengthened. It's right underneath this upper high, and it's still going to be in that area as we head into uh, Thursday morning, and just so you can see where it is again. So there's the center of circulation right in here moving away from cuba what does the wind shear look like simple 200 millibar simple meteorology always wins you can see it's located in here and it's right underneath that upper high so i think this is going to be a major hurricane as we head toward thursday morning now where does it go from here and uh, real quickly then you could see a move to the west and then a turn toward the north so remember we were talking about the european
that the European has showed a westerly move. I, I think there's going to be a, I think what's going to end up happening, there's going to be a combination of a western move like the European have and then a turn toward the north. But let, let's talk about the wind shear here. And you can see, and again, the, the time, the, the, this is 25, I think this is about 24, about 25 degrees north is right in here, that latitude right here, right in here, right around in here. So watch the wind shear as we get into Friday. There, here's the line that I've been talking about right in here. Maybe it's 27. Or no, it's about 20, somewhere in there. So anyway, look at the wind shear as we go forward here on this line. But as we get into Friday, see how the wind shear really starts increasing. Then by Saturday, right in here, this is where things go downhill for um, Raphael. So uh, I think it's got a free run to maintain its hurricane until it gets right into here. And that's probably not going to be until Saturday night. And then this wind shear kicks in. And this is just going to shred it as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Look how this wind shear in this area concentrate in here. And it, it just continues to strengthen here. Watch this. There it goes. Just keeps going and going. I mean, you're, you're talking about a lot of wind shear. And keep in mind, keep in mind, it's not moving. If it was moving like this with the wind shear, it wouldn't be as detrimental, but it's not. The wind shear is like this, and Raphael's going to be moving like this. So it just comes, it's almost like walking into a headwind. So this system is really going to weaken here. And just to show you what the American model shows here, and I have no reason to doubt it. Watch how uh, once we get into Saturday, watch how it just goes. Now, what's really interesting, you can see how bad this wind shear is going to be. Now, according to GFS, and I, what will end up happening? I want to show you this. So here's your 500 millibar. Let me get rid of the wind shear so you can see how bad this is going to get sheared. So this is 500 millibar. You could see the energy. Watch this. Watch where this energy goes. In here, I want you to concentrate on this just to show you how severe this wind shear is. There's the energy aloft associated with, um, with Raphael. Watch where it goes. So that energy goes west. You see that? See how this energy goes west? Goes like this as it feels the trough. The same time, by Sunday morning, here's your upper energy. Sunday evening, your upper energy is over here, getting sheared out. Where's your surface flow? Where's your surface storm? Way back here. See, so it's it, it's getting so sheared that the lows here, the energy's here, so it's not vertically stacked anymore, and th that's why this is just going to get crunched by this wind shear, like paper through a shredder. Shredder, that's it. And you could see there's virtually there's we may never get a landfall with this at all. Now I thought, quite honestly, we would get a landfall a couple of days ago. Now the idea that it would weaken the tropical storm or tropical depression—that was right. We may never get a landfall with this. And I will say this: this is going to be the first hurricane that comes into the Gulf of Mexico during the season. And and you know you could say this uh, with any season. Usually, when you get a hurricane or any kind of storm coming into the Gulf of Mexico, it is committed to make landfall. This may be one of the rare instances that it doesn't. And and if you're going to get that scenario where you get a storm coming into the Gulf of Mexico and it doesn't make landfall, that would happen during the month of November. So I think you can breathe a sigh of relief in Louisiana and Florida. You're not getting any impacts from this. Or, you know, I shouldn't say any. There'll be some. You know, there's going to be a lot of... There's going to be a lot of... Um, a lot of wave action with this. Let me, I want to, where did that, where did that go here? Let me, let me look at this quick. Why, where did my uh, telestrator go? Maybe I closed it down. Let me open it back up here. Hmm. I seem to have lost my telestrator. Um, hmm. Well, that's not good. Well, let me end, let me end like, uh, let me end like uh, this here. Um, I believe that the impacts are going to be very limited in the central Gulf Coast states. And I don't think you're, I'm not even sure you're going to get a landfall anymore. This system gets shredded so much. This is great news. 
um, you know, every storm that's got into the Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico has made landfall and caused damage in the Gulf of Mexico so far this season. This is going to be the one that doesn't. There will be impacts in the southeastern Keys uh, tonight and tomorrow, but that's it. Now, can there be some uh, uh, a strong surf? Uh, southern Louisiana, uh, coastal Louisiana, Mississippi? Yeah, there can be because this is really going to churn up the seas. But, uh, but I will say this, the impacts are going to be minimal, and that's good news. If you have any questions or comments, you can follow me on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at AccuRaino.